But there in the middle of the night, the parking lot, all of a sudden, you know, the hospital got a free parking lot uh, repavement. But the funny thing is, 30 miles away from there, the next day, there was a sighting. that It was a couple dozen people. There was a lake there. Swear up and down that a UFO came out of the lake. That was 30 miles away from this town. I've, I've heard that, too, that the UFOs like to hang out at in, under in, underwater in lakes. I've heard that a lot of, a lot of sightings are actually in the water. I don't know. I had one scientist on my show back months ago. He, uh, he said what happens is when they come through our atmosphere, they overheat. So that's usually why they go into the water to cool back down or they have to touch down for a little while, you know, to whatever they have to do to keep going on. And I'm just kind of wondering, like, even in that hospital parking lot, if that wasn't a UFO, if it touched down there for, you know, a few minutes and then took back off and then 30 miles later went and, you know, dove into a lake, uh, you know, to cool down or whatever. I, it, it's funny because a lot of these sightings were, you know, where UFOs supposedly have landed, they have found one interesting thing, and it's like mercury droplets. Yeah, there must be something with that anti-propulsion and um, anti or propulsion with anti-gravity uh, capability. Something with mercury, and we can't figure out how uh, how to do it yet. And and every time we try, our, our guys die because it's so, you know so poisonous. I know um, I, when I did some research for my book, there was, again, like you're talking about mercury droplets at uh, this abandoned uh, place that the Nazis were using. It was like right on the border of Germany and Poland where they theoretically created uh, Die Glock or um, also known as the Bell and it was supposed to be their response to time travel. Now, again, this is all um, based on the, the um, ramblings of one reporter named Igor Witowski. So um, from Poland and supposedly all of the, um, the slaves from the work that was kind of like a work camp, all of the slaves, as well as their top engineers, they were using the slaves to test out this, the, the mer- mercury to get this thing off the ground. They kept dying. They kept remixing the formula to get this thing going. And then the slaves that they had from the, the work camp would go in there and test it out and they'd end up dead. And this, you know, went on for dozens and dozens of people. And then, of course, the war ended and everyone got the heck out of there and uh, the bell was missing but there were blueprint plans for it or de glock and uh, this is a you know a popular thing to talk about in the ufo world what happened to de glock and did it um you know get out get out of our galaxy and travel to another one was hitler inside of it what were any of the other um, high-ranking Nazis inside of it was an escape. So again, just like you're talking about, there was mercury found and the people that were forced to test it out ended up dead. So we, we haven't figured out how to use it. At least maybe governments have figured out how to use it and they're not saying. Well, you know, there's two things. I want to thank James for sending me a message. He said the pyramids in Central America and China have tons of mercury in them. I'm going to check that one out there, uh, James. But, you know, uh, it's funny. Uh, My Saturday host, Michael W. Hall, he runs a uh, group of people. It's called the UFO I-Team. They go out and try and investigate UFO sightings, uh, film, you know, all that stuff, anything paranormal with the UFOs. One thing uh, that really uh, is interesting, back about three months ago, they were having their Monday meetings where they get together at at uh, Denny's, and some older guy came uh, in with a white envelope, an 8 by 10 envelope. Well, Michael W. Hall was an attorney, 
So the first thing he goes, okay, I'm going to be served for one of my, you know, clients or myself. So he grabs this envelope, you know, from uh, the um, uh, guy and uh, the guy, you know, didn't ask any more other than, are you Michael W. Hall? And he grabbed it. And, you know, before he could go catch the guy, the guy was gone. Now, the guy looked like a scientist looking type of guy or professional engineer or something uh, in his 60s and all that stuff with white hair. Well, when Michael opened up this envelope, it was, well, blueprints and how a UFO propels itself. And it starts talking about, you know, this weird stuff with Mercury, uh, you know, spinning in the opposite direction at such and such. And it's a blueprints on how the UFOs work. And he's, you know, uh, they're trying to get more information on it, you know, by sending it out to, uh, I think they sent it out to a lab to have it investigated, you know. But it makes me wonder what is going on. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. There's all there's all kinds of things that we don't know about. There was that Philadelphia experiment, uh the whole goings on at Montauk with uh the the genetically fused together different animals that they were making and then some people say that they were putting these animals in contraptions for time time travel. There's um, a whole lot going on that, you know, they keep us, they keep us in the dark about. Um, yeah, and I don't think they'll ever tell us, I mean, to something drastically happens. You know, that's what I'm worried about. One of these days, you know, we won't find out by the government, you know, that maybe the UFOs really do exist and aliens are walking among us and, and maybe abducting people. Maybe it'll happen one day where, you know, maybe a UFO will crash uh, in front of a lot of people or something will happen. Well, you know, they have been around since, you know, the beginning of time. There there was that, um, that race called the An- Anunnaki, who we found out about from Sumerian tablets you know, Anki and Marduk and um, Isis comes into play. And we, everybody's, of course, heard of Isis. Uh, the She was a goddess who the Egyptians ended up wor- worshiping. And isn't it ironic that that's the name of a terrorist group as well? I know it uh, stands for something, but maybe they wanted to use those letters because... ISIS has something to do with it all. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. But what, but they say that the Anunnaki originally came here and, and started civilization using humans for slaves to mine for gold, which I've always found very interesting. What makes gold valuable? We've got a zillion different kinds of material on this earth that could be construed as rare. What makes gold be one that we picked around the world, you know, not just, not just where everything started in the Middle East, but around the world, every culture seems to put value into cult, into gold. Now, how did that happen? That these people weren't, ha- there was no UN. They weren't having a world conference and saying, Let's make uh, our economy based on gold. But they all used it uh, for valuable, as a valuable commodity, especially in bartering. So we've got this, these aliens, Anunnaki, come down to Earth. They're, they're mining for gold. We've, um, we still consider gold uh, hugely valuable. Uh, we've, we have our gold supposedly in Fort Knox. Yeah, I don't I believe mean, that's that another anymore. Cons- I believe that's empty too. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I the last time a president's even seen the gold was supposedly in 1970. I mean, it's been what, almost 50 years, and nobody's wanted to see the gold. Yeah. That's weird. Well, you know what? What makes your dollar worth anything? Technically, it, your money is not worth anything. 
I mean, seriously. Right. I, you know, it's, it's all paper. It's all in a computer, you know, and it's all, you know, made up. You know, that, that's what it scares me. People don't realize there's nothing to back up anything anymore. So that $100 mm-hmm. bill you have, technically, it would be good maybe to light your cigar with, technically, if anything ever happened. Oh, ex- I, yeah, exactly. We used to have a gold standard. And then Roosevelt took that away. And he, he wanted to buy back everybody's gold. So, I mean, all of this with the gold, with the gold, with the gold is so weird to me. Um, and now it's not just us, it's the entire world. We, we have a economy that's in the cloud. It's nothing. It's worth nothing. There's nothing real. There's not, nothing has any worth. It's, it's numbers in a computer. I, yeah, that's what scary. I don't get it. It's nothing. It's nothing there to back it up. It's just like you yeah. said, all numbers in the computer. So I mean, what? Honestly, I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, I guess you can print as much money as you want. Is it going to cause uh, inflation? Is it going to cause whatever? I don't see how it can. Because you know what? Like Trump said one day, "Hey, we just print up more money." That's what we've been doing for decades. Yeah, I know. <laughs> When I was a kid, I was so happy. I had silver certificate, you know, dollar bills and five dollar bills. And I remember it said, you know, silver certificate. You could actually, at, when I was a kid, you could actually take that into the bank and demand silver for it. And you'd have to wait the next day, but they would give you silver for it. You know, it, it, now, I mean, what are you going to say? You, hey, what's your dollar worth? Hey, give me something to back it up. They look at you. Well, I'll give you another dollar. <laughs> well, it's not worth anything. Right. It's only it's only worth something uh, if you think it's worth something. Well, for birthdays and Christmas, I like to buy my husband gold or silver. Of course, gold is you know thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks an ounce, so that's a lot more difficult for me to to buy him gold. But I'll, I'll buy him like they they sell it in um, tenths and in, in quarters, so I'll, I'll buy him a tenth of an ounce or if I'm feeling, you know, kind of filled with, if I'm having a good month in December or whatever, I might buy them a quarter of an ounce. But anyway, I go to this, this coin store and I was talking with the owner and we got on the subject of new world order. And he said that is 95% of his customers. They don't think their money is worth anything. So they come into his store and they buy silver and they buy gold because they believe that their stocks are a joke. The money in their bank is a joke and it's all going to go south any day from now. And they buy silver and they buy gold because again, like you said, that has worth the gold much more than the silver. But nonetheless, um, that has, they will always be worth something. And uh, where are we getting that? It's like, okay, I, I agree with it, but this whole silver and gold, especially gold, has been going on since the beginning of, of time. Who assign, the, only, the only people that we know who have assigned gold as anything of worth starts off with this Anunnaki alien race and they were mining, specifically mining for it. Is is that where it all came to be? They came down to this earth. They said, we need gold because it does something with our economy or something with our flying machines or something with our life. Uh, well, you know, what, what is, Dina, Dina, it's like this, okay? A lot of people, you know, what has been driving up the price in silver is silver is starting to get rare. And it's used in, you know, circuit boards, you know, like in your computer, mm-hmm. in, in your phone. I mean, they use silver a lot on a lot of electronics. And it's getting to the point now where it's getting, you know, harder to find it. The same with, you know, if you look at a alien race, maybe they're using it in their technology. They have to use gold. Gold uh, conducts more than silver does. And it certainly conducts more than aluminum will. And maybe they had to use it for whatever their, you know, uh, uh, situation is. 
And I, I still really believe that this planet has been rebooted several times because. 